What up everybody, and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz, and I talk about blades. And today, guys, we're not going to talk about blades. Uh, we're going to talk about an issue that I have recently come across with a popular new firearm that I think that people need to know about. Now, I have checked out every review video on this firearm on YouTube. No one is making mention of this. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to put a very short video out. We're going to talk about this right now. What we're going to talk about, guys, is an issue with the Ruger Wrangler single action 22 long rifle revolver that Ruger recently introduced 2019. This is a budget version of the single six in 22 long rifle only no 22 magnum but you can get this at a typical street price of a 179.99 guys so you could be out the door depending on uh, your local taxes for under 200 dollars it's a fine little firearm it is a joy to shoot guys a uh, 22 long rifle in a single action type revolver is it's just fun to shoot now we're going to set this down real quick. The issue is with dry firing. Um, dry firing, in my opinion, um, I don't like to dry fire any handgun. Uh, most of my handguns are striker fire handguns, and they specifically, uh, you're not supposed to dry fire them unless you're using snap caps or dummy rounds. But Ruger says in the manual for this firearm, that it can be dry fired. Um, let's take a look here in the manual. Where we're looking at is right here, guys. And you can read that. Ruger Wrangler can be dry fired without damage to the firing pin or other components. And I am calling bullshit on that, guys. Um, one of the ways that Ruger is able to bring this firearm to the market is um, the tolerances are a little more open I think uh, than a higher-end revolver now none of them are crazy guys it's not a piece of junk there's nothing wrong with the gun uh, but when you start dealing with tolerances in the thousandths of an inch uh, things can get funny uh, you know a tolerance is that equal the thickness of a human hair so in dry firing this, what I found with my example is within the first 48 rounds fired through this revolver, I could no longer, and let's take a look here real quick, guys. This is a safe firearm. All right, I could no longer load any round into any bore on the cylinder. They would not go at all. In fact, I took the cylinder out and could not you know set the cylinder down on the table i could not force around into any of the bores in the cylinder and um, what turned out to be guys now i had read that uh, ruger typically uh, their cylinder bores are really tight tolerance as far as 22 long goes and you have some issues with some aftermarket ammunitions that have uh, cases that are just a, just a couple of thousands out. Um, you know, and that would be bulk ammo. Now, what I was trying to do was load four different premium ammos, two from CCI, a Winchester Super X, a Federal Match Grade. None of them. You could not fit around into any cylinder, guys. And I thought, well, we're going to have to send this cylinder in and get Ruger to hone it uh, because it's just a little tight. And then I started thinking to myself, well, wait a second. You could put rounds in it when you first got it. What were you doing that caused this? So I started doing some research and started seeing dry fire uh, and, and different people talking about it. And they were talking about whether you could dry fire it or not. And, you know, the manual says you can with no damage, guys. But I'm going to show you something right here. Now, I hope that we can get this. 
Now, you're going to see here right at, I'm sorry guys, right at the outside edge of each cylinder, there is a half moon indention. Do you see that half moon indention, guys? There is not much to it. Now, that is where the firing pin is coming out and it's hitting the rim of the case and it's hitting the rim of this cylinder bore here, guys. And it is just a few thousands out. So what it was doing when you dry fired, it is peening this small half moon shape into the outside edge of every one of these cylinders. And what happens when you peen metal? You are displacing the metal, guys. So what's happening is when you're dry firing and there's no case in here, no rim, uh, that firing pin is coming out far enough to actually peen that. It is pushing material, displacing material into the cylinder itself. So what I did, guys, is I've got detail files here at the house. I bought a good set of detail files to use for uh, practicing uh, file work on the spines of knives. And what I did is I took a full round file and I went into that cylinder, that bore. And I'm going to try to illustrate this, guys. We'll use this as a sort of a straight edge. Uh, that's the wall of your cylinder, okay? What I did is I wanted to touch that inside rim, okay, on the inside. So I offset an angle just a little bit to where I was touching just the inside of it, not the face, but just the inside, but I wasn't scraping up the walls of the bores themselves. And I took that burr off, guys. Uh, and, you know, not technical stuff. Uh, it's not CNC machining or anything. Uh, you can see that <clears throat> looking at it from this, you know, from this angle, guys, flat on perpendicular to the face here, uh, you can see I didn't come out and take off any metal. Uh, what I did was strictly down in the cylinder. And the only way you can see it at all, guys, is if I've touched the finish off of it. Because uh, we are talking just a couple of thousands is all it took to block those cases from moving in and out of the cylinder. Um, and those cylinder bores, guys. And I had, I had peened every one of them dry fire. And because the manual said, hey, you can dry fire this with no damage to the firing pin or uh, in any other components. Now, that may be correct in a perfect world, guys, but Ruger is building this pistol to street uh, tax and all for under $200. Uh, so there is some variance there in the tolerances. And if you have one where that firing pin is going to come out a couple of thousandths uh, towards that extreme of the tolerance range, um, then you may get this pin in, guys. So my warning is to all Ruger Wrangler owners, do not dry fire your Ruger Wrangler. There is potential for this to happen. Now, what do I think now that I have repaired this? Well, guys, I still, I love this little pistol. Uh, now that I have learned that you need not dry fire it, or you should not dry fire it, let's say, um, I think everything is going to be okay with it. I've not had any issues with it at all. All right, guys. Uh, no issues with it at all. It's smooth. It's uh, the fit and finish is well done on it. We'll have a review coming up. I don't want to turn this into a review. This is strictly a warning uh, for those of you that own these pistols or are considering buying one. And yes, I do recommend the Ruger Wrangler, even with that very slight issue, because if you know about it going into it, it is a non-issue totally, guys. Uh, there will be no issues at all with regular firing of this firearm. And you know what? Take you six rounds of spent brass if you want to dry fire and stick your brass down in it, guys, and just dry fire all you want. You'll still have that uh, the brass to hold that firing pin off of the 
face of those cylinder bores so you don't get the peening. And uh, it'll be non-issue, guys. Uh, I wish I would have brought some rounds out here because every one of them, all I did was I took that burr off, guys. Um, and uh, every one of the cylinders now, the cylinder bores, you can drop the round in. The round will fall out under its own weight, guys, uh, just the way that it should have been. So, Ruger Wrangler, warning, guys, on dry fire practices with it. Please use some spent brass when you're dry firing uh, to keep from having this issue. If you have this issue, it's a super, super simple fix, guys. Just be careful if you're going to get in there with a file. Make sure it is a round file, a small diameter round file. Um, I even taped off both ends of the file itself to where I just had a, a, you know, a short section exposed. That way, you know, the tip wouldn't be rubbing on the inside of the cylinder. I wasn't going to do any damage uh, up towards the face of the cylinder bores. Um, I just wanted to touch that very edge, the inside edge uh, of that cylinder bore. <clears throat> All right, guys, there you go. Uh, from Baz on Blades, learn from my mistakes. As always, guys, thank you very much for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.